K Emphasis provides world class online IT training, staffing, and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Emphasis How we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Emphasis has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kemphasis.com. Okay, so Lydia says I'm fine. Uh, how about Ajit Amir, Florence, Kirti, Madhu, Madhu, Pratima, Rashmi, Sai Kiran? Saroja, Shalini, Sri. I, I already have a parking installed on the laptop. Okay, that's great. Um, yeah. Right. Okay, so let just to give a background, uh, what is the use of this? Okay, I mean, what is the use of having uh, writing some server side uh, programs? Now, if you uh, see any of the programs, let's say uh, Facebook, Yahoo, uh, any of the chat messengers, any of those things which you see, those are basically uh, your. Those are kind of an application which runs on your on your machine. Okay, and uh, every now and then, let's say the Facebook updates uh, or or the Facebook Messenger gets updated or the Yahoo Messenger gets updated. So what you have to do is you have to get the updates. Okay, so every time you have to get the updates and you have to bring it to your machine. Otherwise, if let's say you're working on your version number two and the Facebook version is right now version six, you can still chat, no doubt, but still there are different features which uh, Yahoo or Facebook has added, which you cannot see that, right? So it, it's kind of an application wherein you're running it in your system, okay? Now, if you see this, uh, this is a small Swing application. Swing is again, uh, it's, it's again, a uh, uh, application which is again developed using a core Java itself. Okay. Now we have been talking about a lot of calculations. We did calculations. Okay. So again, it's very simple. I uh, just need to add uh, two numbers like one plus three equals to four. So this complete ap application has been uh, built upon your core Java itself. Okay. In core Java, there is a, a package that is a swing package. Okay. So AWT package in, in specific, you use those things in order to develop your uh, your application. So when I say develop your application, this is an application which has been developed in order to do your work. Now, usually what we do, we just, uh, till date, we have seen a lot of examples, let's say calculation, and then there are a lot of methods in this, okay? And you can do whatever you want to do with the help of this class, right? But in general, it is not only the core Java, somebody has to access that, right? So here with the help of this particular application, I can access that particular method and I can use it, okay? So the same way, we are not going to get into it because uh, it's again a, a different uh, course, okay? Wherein you just need to le learn your swings, uh, AWT and all, in order to develop the UI, okay? So here, my main objective is to say that, uh, let's say today, uh, if you see very small fonts here, right? I can ship this to your to your email ID and you can see this, uh, this particular application, right? Now tomorrow, I have made it more beautiful, right? So what I can do, again, I have to ship it to you. Right. Each and every time I do any enhancements on this uh, on this particular uh, calculator, okay, I have to send it back to you. Otherwise, you have to check out and you have to run this application. All right. So it's again a pain. I mean, uh, it's basically. Oh, Jaram, uh, the, I'm sorry, Jaram. Yeah, go ahead. The, uh, I'm sorry. Did, did we cover swing already? No, no, no. We are not going to touch swings. I'm just giving an example. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Okay. So here, every every now and then, I have to ship this, or otherwise, let's say, uh, just uh, for the sake of talking right now, in this calculation class, I just add a, a different method, okay? Or I just say, uh, when I do an add value, I did I do some manipulations on this, right? So every if I do any manipulations on this particular logic, business logic, I have to send it back to you. Every now and then, I have I have to send it back to you, okay? But it's it's actually uh, I have to go and install in each and every system. Okay, so instead of doing that, uh, what we can do is we can write some server side programs wherein if I do any updates on the server side programs, all of a sudden within no time, it will be available to everyone in the entire network. 
Okay. So right now we're going to talk about something like a server, uh, client and the server applications. Uh, you have been using those clients and server applications uh, from the very beginning, like uh, you, you, you access Yahoo or you access Gmail or uh, rid of anything as such. You always try, you use your servers. Okay. I mean, you give a request to somebody, somebody is going to process a request and they are going to give a response back to you. All right. So we are going to talk about your server side technologies right now. Okay, so that's on an overview. What is uh, server side technologies basically? All right. Now here in this course, uh, in this session, we are going to talk about servlets. So uh, what is a servlet? So Java servlets are programs that run on a on a web uh, or an application server and act as a middle layer between your request coming from a web browser. Now when you say web browser, now what do you say? You say uh, gmail.com, right? So when you say gmail.com, okay, so not this. So I just say redifmail.com, right? So when you say redifmail.com, redifmail.com, uh, some pages comes into picture, right? And then you say uh, sign in, and then you give your user ID and password, right? So what happens with your user ID and password? You you do a submit or you do a go here, and the user ID and password goes to your server, right? Where is the server located? It could be running anywhere in in the whole world, okay? So the username and the password goes to the server they do some validations whether this username and password is proper or not and then you get a response back with your with your inbox okay so somewhere you are sending this data so the same data we are sending it to the server itself okay so that's what it says a request coming from a web browser so this is my web browser at this point of time all right this is my entire it, it's a chrome browser uh, you can use any kind of browsers so every now and then we'll be talking about your client here so Whenever I say a client, a client is nothing but a browser. Okay, a client could be anything else also. Here we'll be more mainly focusing on the client as a browser itself. Okay. Now uh, that's what it says: uh, a request coming from a, a web browser or other other HTTP client and databases or application on the HTTP server itself. Okay. So it's what is HTTP? I hope if you guys are from your uh, computer background, uh, it is your uh, hypertext transfer protocol. Uh, it's it's a kind of a protocol wherein with the help of which you can communicate. Okay. Now using servlets, you can collect input from uh, users through web pages, uh, forms. So when you say web pages, forms. Now what do you what do you mean by form here? So when you come back to the Redif page here, this is some data you are collecting, right? So you are collecting these data in the form itself. So form is uh, it's a tag where inside that you'll be giving all your information. We'll see that in when we talk about HTMLs also. Okay. So, and we are not going to talk about HTML much. Uh, it's only the uh, basic tags, which we will be using in this case. So the, those things we are going to cover up in this, in this course of action. Okay. Now, uh, okay. So through web page forms, uh, present records from a, a database or another source and create web pages dynamically. Okay, with the help of your servlets also, we can create the web pages dy dynamically. Now, when you say web pages dynamically, what happens basically if you give your user ID and password, you say, uh, welcome Jairam, let's say. If you say, uh, give a user ID uh, something else, it says welcome something else, right? So how that page gets generated? So that page gets generated automatically itself, right? Now, <clears throat> This is the typical architecture uh, of, a, of a servlet. Uh, so what happens if you see a web form, web form is nothing but your, any kind of browser or any kind of client where it can, it can basically talk to the server. Okay. So it basically gives a request to the web server. We are going to talk about it right now in, in short right now. Okay. What is a web server? And uh, the request comes in, the, it, it first gets processed using a servlet or your JSP. Okay. We'll talk about these two uh, things also. And then it does some manipulations and at last it get, gives a response back to, to the browser. So you get, send a request, you get a response. And once you send the request, it might do any kind of manipulations here. It can uh, do the basic validation. It can even go to the database also. And it can, uh, in the database, it can check your username and password. And then if it validates and it says, okay, this is proper, then give a proper response. If it is not proper, it says you are not a valid user. Okay, so this is the typical uh, architecture here. Uh, you have a servlet and you have got a JSP, so you've got a couple of other Java files also, uh, which comes into picture whenever you send a request to the web server. All right. Now, what does servlets do? Uh, it reads the explicit data sent by the client or the browser. So what is explicit data? The data which you have sent it, let's say the user ID and the password. Okay. 
I did simply set HTTP request uh, data sent by the client browser itself. This includes cookies. Uh, if you have, uh, if you have any idea about cookies, it's it's well and good. Otherwise, we'll see that as well. Okay. Some media types and comp compression uh, schemes uh, the browser understands and so forth. So when you simply send a request from your browser to the server or to XYZ location, it doesn't even only send your user ID and password. Apart from that, it sends multiple other informations also. Okay. So we will even talk about different tools wherein you can see uh, how the request goes and how the response comes up comes up to your machine as well. All right. And it processes the data and generates a result. Uh, sends the explicit data. There is a document to the client browser. This document can be sent in a variety of format. You can send it in the HTML. You can send it in the XML. Uh, in the G, uh, image format or Excel, etc. Okay, so there are a lot of ways you can send a request to the to the server. All right. Now, when we talk about servlets in specific, uh, as you know, uh, when we spoke about JDBC, we had to use the JDBC package, right? So the same way when you talk about servlets, there are specific packages you need to use it, and these are packages doesn't comes with your JDK package. Okay, you have to explicitly use these packages in your class path if you are using it. So you have to explicitly add all these packages. So one is your Java X dot servlet and Java X dot servlet dot HTTP. All right, these are the two packages which we are going to use it. Right now, um, just stay tuned. We'll learn, learn about all these things. So no no worries at all if you don't even understand right now. All right. Now, yeah, I think you guys have already done the installation. Uh, we'll be completely running this application on your Tomcat itself. Okay. Now let's let's start up and uh, just give, give uh, to give you just uh, a basic introduction on what should be the directory structure and where to put your uh, files, where to put your var file, what is a var file. So those things let us see it right now. Okay. So the very first thing, if you go back to your uh, Eclipse, okay. So I could have even done the same application using a Notepad or Notepad plus plus, but let me take the help of my Eclipse here. Okay. Uh, now, in order to create a project, what you have to do is you just need to say a new. Okay. So just say others. Just type in dynamic web project and just give a project name as web pro. Right. So I just given a project name as web pro here. And uh, if you see the very first time you set up your web dynamic web project, it will ask you for a target runtime. All right. So if you have a target runtime, if it is not there, just say new runtime and choose on the appropriate Apache Tomcat version, what you have it in your machine. All right. Probably you just go with your version 7.0. Okay. And just say next. So when you say next, uh, it is going to ask you, this won't be there for you. It will ask you for the package wherein you have downloaded your Apache Tomcat. So in this case, I have uh, downloaded in my D drive and this is my root folder. All right. So this is wherein I have got my Apache Tomcat. So that's what I have it over here. Uh, so this is what I have it and just say finish. All right. So the moment you say finish, uh, cancel. So this Apache Tomcat is going to come to your target runtime. All right. So and then just say next. Next. And when it comes to your web module uh, tab here, sorry, web module screen here. Just click on your generate web.xml file. Okay, so that is a web, uh, generate web.xml deployment descriptor. So this is one of the important file when you talk about your any kind of your web applications. Okay, now just say finish. Okay, now this is just a, a content a directory wherein we are going to keep uh, all the of uh, all the files and 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 the folder structures. Okay, but uh, this in real time uh, it is required. But just for your understanding, uh, this is not important to be in the package structure. Okay, all right. So let me just finish this and just say yes. All right now, if you see uh, a dynamic web project has been created right now and a folder known as web content has been created. Okay, now what do I do uh, with the help of this? Is let me just create a simple HTML. Okay, and let us try to access it from a server. All right. So what do I do first is uh, just right click on this or right click on this. Just say new others HTML. Just click on the HTML file. Next. 
and let me just say as index or let's say hello.html right so when i say next uh, finish it is basically going to create a html file for you i don't need this i don't need this as well okay it is going to create an html basic html file template for you in this i'm just going to say hello h2k students all right um So if you see here, uh, the uh, hello.html file got created just under your web content. Okay, so this is uh, the uh, folder structure which we are going to follow when we talk about Eclipse. And this is the way in your real time also you follow that. Okay, now what next? I want to access this particular HTML from my browser, right? So what I can do basically is I can uh, right click on this, go to the properties, copy the entire HTML file, okay? and go to my browser and access it somewhere here. All right, I can do it in this way. But by doing it in this way, I am not actually accessing the HTML file. Down the line, we are going to talk about uh, a servlet, okay? When you talk about a servlet, you cannot access it in this way, all right? So as we are going to talk, we are talking about a server-side technology and we are talking about HTML as, as the very starting point. So this is how you basically add an HTML inside a web project and it should be under your web content okay now how do i access it in real time okay now what am i going to do is first i am going to create a jar file all right now as of now i'm not going to show this application by running it in the eclipse itself i'm going to show the the very traditional way and where to deploy your applications and whatnot okay so as of now, don't even uh, go with all these things. Uh, we'll talk about web INF, we'll talk about libraries, we'll talk about web.xml uh, file also at the later part, okay? So what am I going to do is I'm going to create a var file. So when you talk about a web application, uh, you are going to bundle your application in the form of your var, that is your, your web archive, okay? So just say right click and say uh, export and export as var file okay so when you say export as var file i just say web pro and where is the destination i just want to put it under your desktop so i'll just say save all right uh, and then just say finish all right so ultimately if i go back to my desktop a web pro dot war has been created all right so let me open the d this one I just want to open the decompiler. So take this decompiler here, drag and drop it out here. Uh, input file, okay, anyways, all right. Okay, so let me just open this and open archive, extract file, extract to extract here. Okay, open archive. So when you say open archive, if you see here, uh, what's the directory structure here, if you see, I have, at the time when I created this module or this project in, in the Eclipse, I had web content under this, okay? But if you see the actual war file which has been created, there is no web content as a folder, okay? This is only for, uh, for a kind of uh, a container or a kind of a package structure in which we basically create our files. Now, if you remember in Core Java, we say about source, right? Or yeah, we, we, when we talk about source, it is only a folder wherein you keep your Java files, but actually the Java file package name is what? Here it starts from your com. It doesn't start from your source. Source is just a, a, a structure wherein you basically keep your Java files, right? So I hope this is pretty much clear, right? So the source is just a folder in order to keep your Java files. So web content is just a folder structure just to in order to maintain your folder structure when you talk about creating a dynamic web project in your Eclipse itself, okay? But ultimately, when you export this particular project, it does not have your web content. It has all the files under your web content, okay? So this is the direct structure. You have your meta enough and you have got your uh, web enough under your web enough, you have got classes and then libraries, okay? So all the structure, what you have it here. Now under, you do not even have classes here. We'll even talk about uh, down the line. Okay, so at, at this point of time, we are only interested about your hello.html. Okay, so how do I access this hello.html? So what am I going to do is I'm going to 
copy this var file and if you remember in the previous uh, class i spoke about the apache tomcat and your web inf okay and root okay so i don't want to access the root right now i'm going to access my own files here okay so i just want to copy and paste the var file here right so once i copy and paste the var file my next step is to start the server so how do i start the server go back to the apache tomcat uh, home folder and then just go to your bin and just say startup okay so when you click on the startup you can see the server it says the server startup in 1826 milliseconds okay make sure if you guys have installed uh, oracle lexi in your machine uh, it will give you uh, a runtime exception saying that uh, the port 8080 is already been used now if you see here uh, it did some initialization and it is using your 8081 port okay by default if i go back and go back i have just closed that right now i go to the configuration i just did it uh, explicitly because if you know if i go back to my services and if i see here oracle oracle xc so it says oracle service is running okay so by default oracle xc is going to run on port number 8080 okay so every server runs on a particular port okay so the way i mean if you uh, try to access your uh, oracle xc right so you basically give a port number 1521 right so in order to access your database but your server is basically running on your 80 it takes your 8080 okay so in order to have some conflicts, we are, I'm basically going to change the port number to 8080 to 8081, okay? So how do I change that? I need to go to the server. If you see Apache Tomcat configuration, go to the server out here. And let me drag and drop it here, okay? Just expand this and just search for 8081 for now, okay? So initially for me, this was 8080. I have changed it to 8081 because already my oracle server is running on 8080 all right okay so let me just remove this from the site so go back again go to the uh, bin folder and just say startup so okay so if you see there is a log here i think it will be pretty small to show you here properties Font okay, so this is what I can do at the max. All right, so if you can see here, it says a deploying web application archive uh, that is present in your uh, D Apache web app web pro dot war. Right, so this is getting deployed. So the moment this gets deployed, we should be able to do this from Eclipse also, right? Yes, we can do it from Eclipse also. But Eclipse, we will talk about that, Lydia. In Eclipse, so you will not come back and uh, do any modification in your uh, in your configuration of this particular particular Apache Tomcat. Once you do it in your Eclipse, it basically creates its own uh, server directory. Okay, so let's if you just want to quickly see that. Okay, once we run that, uh, I'll show you that. Okay, so as of now, let's just stay tuned here. Okay. So coming back, I have ran this application. Now, if you go back to your web apps, okay. Now for your webpro.var file, a folder got created automatically. So the var file got extracted. Now, if you just open this var file, you see the same structure in, in the form wherein I have extracted that using your zip folder, okay. So when you see that here, extract here, okay. So you see these folders are the one which is present in your war file. Okay, let me delete this. Now the same thing comes up over here. It's it only gets extracted out here, and you see the same structure out here. Okay, you can very well point uh, your web pro to your uh, to your Eclipse, and you can work out, but it's it's not preferable. Okay, now how do I access this? Now this is my root context. When I talk about root context, uh, it is the base folder of your application where it is where you have deployed it okay so let i just copy this web pro i'll go back to my browser here and then i'll just say http localhost okay 8081